Hello, welcome to the Lone Show. I'm your host, Jami Lone. And in this episode, I've brought on regulars Risk Eleven and Eric Taylor, who will join us eventually, or not, who who knows. Uh, as for our guest, she's from San Diego, California. She is an author who has written the, lo- the likes of Dr. Wayne Diker and Dr. Vika Van Kill. And uh, yeah, we're going to discuss a lot more about that. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, I give you Vivian Niebel. Yes, hello, uh, Jamie. Uh, nice to be here. Thank you for having me. Anytime. So, how's life? Life is beautiful. It is great. It was not always that way, but now I'm in, at the most beautiful stage of my life. Great. And uh, have you been up too much recently? Have I been what? Have you been up too much recently? Yes, yes, of course. I'm uh, uh, engaged in interviews and uh, speaking engagements and so on and so on to uh, speak about my books. Hmm. Okay. So uh, t- tell me about what you do. Well, I, uh, I have uh, written in my first uh, uh, book, which is a memoir. I started writing at the age of 70. I'm 78 right now and uh, almost 79. And I actually started writing when most people want to retire into a quiet life. You know, that's when I started to become active because I feel that uh, there's so much, it's such an emerging energy as we age and the wisdom and the emotional maturity, all that, uh, there's much to do with it. So this is, that's when I started writing and I decided to write first. Uh, about my whole multi multifaceted life and love story, I was uh, born in the epicenter of Nazi Germany in Berlin, and uh, at the height of the war. And uh, I remember very much the aftermath of World War Two, which was hunger and cold. And this is a reminder what's going on now, you know, in the Ukraine. I can I can identify with that because I been through that, you know, through that turmoil. Uh, And uh, I feel for these people. And uh, so I, my life had been, I actually experienced more trauma by the age of 14 than many will in a lifetime. Okay. And tell me more about the books you've written recently. Yes. Well, the first book is From Rubble to Champagne. Rubble is the destruction of, uh, uh, you know, I was born with uh, during the the war. So rubble means the destruction and uh, champagne is the life I have now. So it, I faced many adversities. I had so many strikes against me uh, and uh, I've uh, overcome all these challenges and I'm now living my most beautiful life. And therefore I wanted to share my life story you know, with which, in you know, I was a, a part of the a wave of struggling German immigrants at the age of 13. We uh, in Canada, and uh, there we went hungry once again because uh, there was no work to be found. And so I asked my mother if I could not go into the workforce. I was 14 at that age, and she had to um get a special permit uh, because of that child labor law but she uh, obtained that permit and i got a job at a dentist and he was going to uh, teach me to become a dental assistant assistant but um, um there was one uh, thing a terrible thing that happened one day when the dentist was out i was alone in the office one of his friends came in and sexually abused me And uh, so that was another shock. And then uh, um, eventually I spiraled into deep depression at the age of 17. I tried to take my life, my most precious life. I tried to take it because I could not deal with, you know, the, uh, the situations. And as at the age of 17, you know, so little. And uh, uh, I had to go through that. And I was miraculously saved by a little girl who came into the garage where I tried to take my life. I closed the garage door and started the motor of my car. I had a bought a used little car and uh, I heard somewhere that that carbon monoxide would render you unconscious. So I waited for my ultimate end and the little girl appeared. She was about six 
and she asked me what I was doing. And so I uh, turned off the motor immediately, opened the garage door and told her I'm going to wash my car. But that was a miraculous intervention. I uh, 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 saw a glimmer of hope and I uh, held on to that glimmer of hope and eventually uh, my life got better. I uh, met my husband at the age of 20 who turned my whole life around. He believed in me because I had very little self-confidence uh, and he believed in me and he thought I could do things that I never thought possible. I eventually learned to pilot a plane. I ran a marathon. I helped him in his business. And at the late age, I even wrote two books. So it just shows you, you know, um, what uh, another person can do for you if they see the potential in you. Okay, great. Uh, anything else you've done so far? Well, what I've done uh, so far, well, I mainly write about uh, my experience, my life experience. And, uh, and uh, so I finished that memoir. And then I wrote my second book. Uh, during the later years, I studied the philosophies from great minds, the philosophers and the poets and great thinkers. I studied uh, their wisdom and I applied it into my own life experiences. And uh, I, since I applied that, it is amazing uh, how much you can, you learn from it and how you can overcome uh, adverse situations. You cope with situations, with challenges, you learn to go how to cope with them and I applied it their wisdom and it works and I want to share that with others I also talk about in my second book about the aging process you know that it is uh, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, I told you that before and uh, I just want people to see aging as beautiful not as a decline but as a as a uh, move forward you know to to uh, bring great gain greater knowledge and wisdom and it's all about connections and you can have a fulfilled and beautiful life in the later years and share your wisdom so that is what i'm doing that is my mission now to help others overcome great love to hear that it's nice that you're sharing your experiences with other people it's nice yes it's because it's all about connection Connection is everything, you know, in the end, when we all, when our life is done, you know, the only thing really that really matters is how did I uh, affect other people? What kind of an effect did I have on other people? And I aim, I aim to have a good effect. Hmm. Okay, great. So what were your fam? so what connections do, do your family have throughout the ages? Uh, can you give that to me again? What was that? It, what connections uh. does... Sorry. Uh, yeah, what, I'm sorry. What 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 kind what connection what connections do you does your family have throughout the ages? My 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 family. Yeah. Uh, well, well, my husband. Yeah, my husband is now. We are now. Um, in, 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 this is in my second book. Uh, we are I'm now. You know, living at peace does not mean that you're going to be without conflict. I'm now again. Um, Faced with uh, uh, great challenges, my husband of 57 years and the love of my life is now uh, very ill. And he uh, uh, and now my mission is to aspire, inspire him to hold on to that same hope and faith that things will get better. With other words, I'm very, very optimistic about life. You know, when we uh, uh, optimism is so is so important and i'm very positive and i think we need to have positive thoughts because positive thoughts spur on more positive thoughts and so i believe in being positive and hopeful and i do everything in my power to have the best outcome yet right. and this is what i share in my second book i share this uh, you know how to cope with these challenges and uh, to accept them rather than to resist them because that gives makes us resilient, number one. And the beauty about resilience is we can learn to become resilient. You know, resilient people are those that face challenges and uh, end up 
gaining something positive for themselves in the end. That's what a resilient person is. And I have become very resilient over the years. And now is my time to give back to my husband. And my books were um, dedicated to him for all that he's done for me. In fact, the first book was uh, my uh, token of gratitude if, um, uh, uh, on his 80th birthday. It was a gift to him on for his 80th birthday. And uh, gratitude, you know, gratitude, uh, Jami, is so important. It unlocks the fullness of life. You know, all the things that I've gone through, all the, the things I had to, the, uh, had to endure made me immensely gratitude, grat grateful. I have, an, I have a profound sense of gratitude. Fabulous. Um, are, you, have you, are you planning to write any more books in the future? Well, I wrote these two books in fairly in a fairly short time, and now I need a little um, uh, uh, creative uh, <laughs> rest. And uh, during this time, though, I promote my books in a sense that I go on speaking. I'm on speaking engagements, and I want to uh, put out the word, you know, for people listen and follow these wise minds and you can it can lead to a life of fulfillment and a very meaningful life this okay. is my message now and i'm working on that at the time and also of course it, taking care of my husband you know because you know life is about gratitude generosity and an awareness of service you know it, that is a meaningful life it is, uh, it is in, in work, it's doing something of the significance. And in love, it's caring for someone. And I care for my husband uh, at this time. And it's amazing how uh, optimism and positivity, it can create miracles. It continues to create miracles because he's doing quite well under the circumstances. And we still find joy and meaning in life, despite the challenges we have you know i told him you know as long as we have each other uh, we can go through anything i hold him and i tell him and uh, this uh, and also um, thank him for loving me so it is uh, it's a beautiful thing to age together and to uh, uh, help each other okay interesting i like that so Wait, when you're not uh, writing, what do you do in your free time? It's it, actually I'm always writing because I take notes and I prepare for interviews. That's when I do writing again, and then presently on a book tour, which lasts until almost the end of April, which is a virtual book tour, uh, which is nice. It enables me to connect. Uh, I'm I'll also have my own podcast, lessons learned about life and love. Is, is the name of my podcast. And we discuss uh, all emotions, you know, anxiety, trust, faith, uh, hardship. And especially now, you know, this is a, a subject that is especially relevant now because of what's going on in the Ukraine. The war in the Ukraine, you know, I can, I, I told you that I, I I have all these experiences, but these experiences, these painful experiences, they can, can, you know, be a powerful tool to help others. I use yeah. my painful experiences as a tool to help others. Yeah, that's great. And, and what you're doing right now is just amazing. I'd say keep it up because you're making a great change in this world. I hope so. And that is my mission uh, to make this place a little better than I found it. And it's time to give back. You know, I, uh, despite all the, the, the hardship that I've gone through, it kept me, it kept me grounded in reality. And despite my, my prosperity right now, you know, I still never forget where I came from, what I went through. And I want to uh, guide others to find the way, and especially under these trying times there's so much uncertainty at this time going on okay nice so what was life for you growing up 
Oh, growing up, it was very tough. Um, in the aftermath of uh, World War II, in ravaged post-war uh, war Berlin, uh, you know, we had to, uh, we were, hunger and cold was a constant and uh, um, that was terrible. And then I went to school, the first grade, my teacher condemned me dumb as being dumb because I could not follow the concepts of the teacher. I just had a different map and that Again, you know, it took all my self-confidence. It was, I had no self-confidence, very low self-esteem, but I always worked hard. I always tried, you know, to, to please. And I went out with a little pail. I remember in the aftermath of, of the war with a little pail and, and collected scraps. And I asked for scraps um, for my cat because to put some dignity into this situation. I was embarrassed, but uh, so I brought that home and my mother made soups from them. And I went to the market, open air market and got uh, brought uh, wooden crates home so she can make a fire. Everything was very, very tough. You see, I was an Ill illegitimate child. So I grew up without a father. I was also deemed stateless. So I belonged to no country and all that you know, did not help my self-esteem for sure. And uh, uh, my mother was, however, a, a fiercely devoted mother, a very loving. She instil instilled great values in us. And for that, I'm very grateful. It was very tough. And then, like I said, at the age of 13, we uh, uh, looked for a better life and immigrated to Canada. And I was able to turn my life around to, to uh, build a new life, which, uh, you know, included immigration and also walking that long path of self-discovery and self-fulfillment. And I've always been this seeker and searcher and uh, it helped me then, uh, you know, one day I said to myself, you know, all these horrible experiences and all uh, the the judgments from people and the uh, did not really define me you know I said to myself I have something beautiful to offer the world and when I realized that I let go of my self-limiting beliefs that kept me trapped in my own mind you know I lived in bondage actually I and I'm sure that many people do to, to, uh, today live in bondage because they have these self-limiting beliefs. Anything is possible. That's yeah. what I say. Yeah, I agree. No matter what happens, anything is possible once you put your yes. mind to it. Yes, and also, also show up, you know, set a foundation for routine and, and dedicate yourself to that practice. Show up for it. You know, you have to do something. Talking about it is not enough. A philosophy is great, uh, but if it's simply the awareness of the teachings or of the experts, it, it's not enough. You need to apply it. That is the thing. You need to do something. You need to apply it. Only then you'll get you'll you'll uh, uh, grow. Yeah, and absolutely. change the world. Yeah. So besides immigrating, uh, have you have you ever traveled anywhere? For like for holiday or vacation? Oh yes, I'm uh, a, a big traveler, definitely. I like I said, you know, I have a life of prosper prosperity uh, now because of my husband. Uh, he was he's a very successful businessman and investor, so I'm uh, um, very very uh, lucky in that respect. Uh, it's the outside riches. I always say, you know, the my wealth is really within. Because I have the inner dignity of a living a fully loved life. That is wealth. But of course, money matters. Money, we need money to function in a society. We need money to take care of our family. And money, you know, has power to help others. So it is, uh, it is uh, good to have, but it is not only money. That's what I'm stressing. You know, I would say, let's work from within. But I, the money uh, uh, allows me to travel. I go to Europe uh, frequently. Of course, the two COVID years, I stayed away. 
And uh, but even those COVID years, I tell you, Jamie, I uh, in those COVID years, I made the most of them. I was grateful that I still had a roof over my head. I I had enough food. You know, it. I believe we can draw a lot of lessons uh, from the, that time uh, because we uh, it, it enables us to reflect more and go more within. It, life had been such a rat race and for many people it still is. They're on a constant treadmill to go faster than the other. We need to stop and think and get to our center and really evaluate what are our values, what matters in life. But I do enjoy the travel. I do that. It, um, it allows me to grow, meet other people. The connections are great. Uh, uh, so I've been to Europe many times. I go on a yearly basis, basis to Europe. I also do cruises and I invite my sister to come along uh, because she went also through the same hardship as I did. And uh, so I uh, share with her. And that is, makes me feel very grateful that my husband supports that commitment. Great. Uh, is there any places you haven't been that you really want to go to? Well, I always wanted to go to the Far East, which I didn't. And now I doubt that I'll be able to do that, at least because my husband is ill. Um, and I always, uh, but I, that, but otherwise I really think I have no regrets. I've seen what I wanted to see mostly, and uh, I can look back and say no regrets. You know, I've been to, 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 to paradise, one can say. It's a figure of speech, but I really can say that. Fabulous. So what kind of process, when you do write your books, what, what kind of process do you have when structuring what you write in each chapter. Yeah, that's interesting. The first book, uh, since it was my life story, I did nothing but reflect, you know, right from the beginning. I ref it was a process of reflection, which also involves nostalgia because uh, you, you, uh, you don't just uh, remember what happened. You also, you find a connection between the events events you know in your life you you find a connection and you draw valuable lessons from them and so i just went from one step to the next step by step what i had experienced and put it down and i was very honest very open when i wrote because you know when you write and you put a part of your heart out there into the world um you are very you face vulnerability because people are quick to judge they will put a stamp on you oh you know she's that she's that but i decided you know what i'm not going to cheat the reader i'm going to be very honest i let people see me deeply see me and i feel that connects that builds bridges uh, uh, i think vulnerable people are necessary and beautiful i honestly believe that great Fabulous. So, yeah, and then the second book was uh, you asked that question. I want to get back to your question. The second book, Lessons Learned About Life and Love, Living with Intention and the Wisdom of Great Minds. It inspired me. Uh, I had to have so much wisdom now because I've taken notes for many, many years when, uh, when I read uh, these, uh, the philosophies and uh, also apply them in, in my life. And I thought, this is a good way to share it. I'm going to write this book. I share this to help others overcome adversities, to cope with life in flexible ways. And it also um, enabled me to write about my husband's uh, um, illness, how we cope with it, because I think there's great value because many people go through the same experiences that I do. You know, their, their life experiences look pretty much uh, like my, my own. And um, so I, uh, I, I wrote about all that, how we cope with it, how we are accepting and still find joy and meaning. And I want to tell people it is possible. Do not uh, give up. Don't, do not let uh, challenges and adversity swallow you up. Yes. Amazing. So, out of all the places you've been to, 
What was the nicest place you've been to? Huh. I tell you, I'm a little bit emotional here. Uh, just before my husband, uh, um, uh, we got married, my husband wanted to introduce me to his mother in Germany. And that was the first time I went back to Germany, went back to Europe altogether. That was 50, 57 years ago. And uh, so from there on, he took me and in, in, introduced me to his mo mother. And then he took me to the south of France. And I love that place because... Uh, that is really where I truly fell in love. You know, we walked those cobblestone, cobblestone narrow romantic streets and saw the fishermen, you know, come with their wooden boats and sell their catch. And uh, my husband introduced me to all the delicacies because he had lived in France, in Paris for a year and a half. And so he was familiar with that, all that, also the south of France. And uh, it's still... To me, I love going back to the south of France. In fact, in July, I'm going back there again. Okay, that's great. Uh, yeah, where it, about? It just, uh, I'm going to Saint-Tropez, Saint-Marie-sur-Mer. Uh, I'm going to Antibes. Uh, all that, that south part. Wow. That, that's going to be quite a trip. And the beauty is, uh, Jamie, I'm inviting my sister as well, so we can share, you know, Share in, oh, okay. those, uh, in, in, in that joy. I also invited my sister to go back to Berlin with me. And we went, you know, the way we grew up. My sister is illegitimate as well by a different father. And, uh, uh, you know, it, uh, two illegitimate children my mother had, but she had a heart of gold. She was uh, ahead of her time. And she was a nonconformist, a rebel, but she had these beautiful values. And that is, you know, to me, the best mother I could have had. And so I'm grateful I had the mother I had. Uh, so is she also uh, raised that, uh, us, uh, us in a way that she said, uh, no matter uh, uh, where you are, always be there, look out for each other, always be there for each other. And uh, I took that very much to heart, what she said. So. We are uh, very close, my sister and I, and uh, so that is a, it's actually a beautiful thing. When we went back to Berlin, we went down memory lane, you know, we went back to all the places. My sister showed me the bunker where we went in, you know, to seek shelter. And uh, my mother went through so much, you know, this was so horrible, this human aggression, this war is so awful my mother was looking for my sister for 10 days she was separated in one of those bomb attacks uh, and found her after 10 days can you imagine what that is to to have to go through that look for your child not know whether she's dead or alive you know oh, it's just yeah. traumatic what war will do it's just so so awful so we went through all this in the memory lane and back to our school and uh, it's, uh, it was a long journey that, that I had, a full long journey. And I also remember, Jamie, when we immigrated and I was 13 years old, looking back, you know, getting on that ship. And when once the ship uh, made its way into the water and I looked back at my homeland, even though I did not have any good experiences there, I did leave everything that was familiar to me and I cried. And then I vowed and said to myself, one day I'm going to return and I'm going to return very successful and people will not even recognize me. And, uh, and I did just that. I manifested my destiny on that ship. Wow, great. Love it. That is, that is quite the motivation story. I love that. Fabulous. Yeah, <laughs> yes, because it's a Cinderella story in the end. Jami, it's a Cinderella story. It started out with all these strikes, everything against me, all the the strikes that I uh, um, uh, had. It's it's it, everything against me, and yet I overcame, and I made this the most beautiful life. And I think there's the one thing that is very important for people to know: when you have someone who believes in you, or you are success successful in some way uh, uh, don't forget where you came from always stay grounded 
And uh, that, that I think is, is so important that you manage your life and your luck well. Do not take anything ever for granted. When you are fortunate, manage, manage it well. Be always aware of where you came from, what you went through, and try to give back. Yeah. Uh, that is all we have for this episode. It was great having you here, Vivian, talking about your book and uh, your family history and all your travels. Amazing. Thank you. Thank you, Jamie. It was so good to have you, uh, to, to be able to have a voice here today with you. Oh, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> So uh, I, I certainly hope uh, this will uh, fall on, uh, on fertile soil. Oh, yes. I certainly hope so, too. There's been a couple of German viewers in the last few weeks. So, uh, yeah, that, oh. that's certainly a possibility. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Thank you, Jamie. Thank you for having me. Anytime. And until next time, stay tuned for more.